Hi everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, another Septandy video, because it's still September, and I want to make another video about Tandys, and this time it's going to be about the Tandy 1000 line of machines. On the bench here you see my Tandy 1000 SX. Actually, this is an AX model, which is a little unusual because I think this was sold at Walmart here in the US, and unfortunately the back has a badge that says 1000 AX, but the front doesn't. It's fallen off. I've found that one of the biggest problems with trying to procure and use some old computers like this one is that often it can be hard to find the appropriate keyboard that goes with a computer, and in some cases, the keyboards aren't easy to find, and it can make using the computer next to impossible. The early Tandy 1000 machines like this is a good example of that, because even though this is a regular PC, you can't just use any PC XT or AT keyboard on this machine. You need the matching keyboard that was designed for these computers, and if you don't have it, you're stuck. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a keyboard like this with a computer like this. Let's get right to it. So fortunately for me, I found the keyboard that matches this particular computer. As far as I'm aware, this keyboard here works with the Tandy 1000, the 1000A, and the 1000SX. Possibly the TX as well, I haven't looked that up, but some of the later Tandy machines, like I have a Tandy 1000TL, that computer works with regular XT keyboards, or maybe it's AT. Either way, a standard keyboard does work with that. For whatever reason, Tandy decided to use a different keyboard protocol for the way the keyboard talks to this machine, rendering using any other keyboard but this one not possible. Now you can take the PS2 connector and connect one of these little adapters here that goes from PS2 to the standard 5-pin DIN connector. This is compatible with 286 machines and up that use this connector. It will not work on XTs, and as I had mentioned before, it definitely doesn't work on this. Even though you can actually plug this in, it does connect, it will not function. If you saw Mr. Lurch's Septandi 1000 video, he mentions that in Australia where he lives, it's much harder to find Tandy 1000 machines than the US, and especially it's impossible to find keyboards. He ended up having to have one sent to him from the US, and even then, he was missing the keyboard cable. Without this bespoke keyboard for this machine, there's just no way to use it. With the help of the excellent Tandy 1000 technical reference manual, which included accurate timing diagrams for the keyboard protocol, along with the keyboard layout and scan code information, I was able to use Arduino and a couple dollars in parts to come up with an adapter that allows you to use a regular PS2 keyboard on this machine. Let me show you how it works. I'll just unplug the stock keyboard and we'll use this very cheap HP PS2 keyboard. And I do have the AT adapter connected. We'll take my adapter and originally this was a keyboard extension cord. So there's a DIN female connector there on that end. And then this end plugs into the computer and a little red mark is just to help me with alignment. And we'll plug that in. There was a beep out of the computer and now I can use the computer as normal. I spent a good amount of time in testing to make sure that pretty much every key on this extended keyboard maps to the Tandy 1000. Now, not everything can work. Of course, like Windows key doesn't work because there's no equivalent key. And a couple of the other keys don't quite work, but it's good enough for you to have a fully operational computer in that if you don't have the matching keyboard for your Tandy 1000, then you can build this adapter and you can get up and running. Let's first take a look at the keyboard layout differences between the Tandy 1000 and this like extended AT kind of standard keyboard layout. Both these keyboards have 12 F keys, which differs from the original IBM PC and PCXT, which only had 10. And then pretty much all the keys over here on the left side are the same between these two keyboard layouts. There's nothing that particularly unusual, although there are two control keys and two alt keys on this extended keyboard layout, while on this one, there's only one control key here, and there's another Alt key here. On the Tandy keyboard, there is actually a bespoke arrow key cluster here. 
So that sort of matches what you have here on the AT keyboard. But then that gets us to these keys over here where there's just a whole lot of difference in the way things work. We have backslash there, we have the pipe key, we have end right here, but then insert and delete have their own keys. While over here, insert and delete are shared with the zero in the period, but on this keyboard, there's nothing like that. Well, I wanted to make sure that the mapping made sense because if you weren't familiar with the layout of this, I didn't want you to have to know that it was the seven key, which says seven at home on here, to get the backslash key, because that's a really common key in DOS, right? So I wanted to make sure that the backslash key worked properly. But the issue is on the Tandy keyboard, the numlock changes the function of this key between backslash and seven. So if numlock is on and you push this, you don't get a backslash, you get the seven. And I didn't want you to have to worry about the state of the numlock so that the backslash key over here would work properly. So there are many ways to go about building this adapter, but the way I did it for testing at least is I took a normal AT keyboard extension cords. So it's male on one end and female on the other end. And I cut it in the middle. And then I took a regular Arduino board <laughs> And it's, it is inside this heat shrink with hot glue in here, but I needed a USB port exposed because I was reprogramming this over and over again. This is the way I did my original one. But for building up a second one, so you need an Arduino. So here's one just like this that I built. It's got the uh, USB port on there. Or you could use one like this, which has no USB port. You do have to program this with a little UART. It's a little USB to serial thing that plugs into these extra pins here but it is a little bit cheaper. You can find these on eBay or AliExpress or whatnot for just a couple dollars at most. That's including shipping, by the way. But I think these are slightly more and it, it gives you the ease of a, a built-in USB port. Only four pins on the keyboard cable are actually used. So I'm just gonna use this little piece of ribbon cable. I don't know where this came from. It was in my spare parts bin. And then you need some connectors. Now I bought these on AliExpress. Again, they're very cheap. It is uh, one of each type, a male and a female. Although if you're going from a PS2 keyboard and you wanna avoid using that little adapter that goes from PS2 to the five pin DIN, you can just use an actual PS2 connector. And the only difference is, um, if you pull this apart, these are a little harder to solder. The pins are closer together and smaller on this. So if you're not that good at soldering, I recommend you use these larger five pin DINs and then you uh, use an adapter from the PS2 keyboard. I'm gonna use these parts right here to build up my adapter. I wanna use regular AT keyboards, not just PS2. So I'm gonna stick with the larger ones and use an adapter if I'm gonna use my PS2 keyboard. All right, so here's the Arduino source code, which I'm gonna stick on my GitHub. Check the link in the description for that. But I've tried to at least write some good information into the comment section here, both for your benefit and also mine in the future when I'm trying to understand what the heck I did. I do wanna preface this by saying I'm a bad programmer so my code is gonna be ugly, messy, and hacked together. I absolutely used other people's code and sort of hacked it up to do what I needed it to do. So I am sure there are a lot better software programmers out there who can take a look at my code and really fix this and optimize it and make it a lot more efficient. But luckily, this code is working fine as it is. So if you don't know what you're doing with this, you can simply program this into an Arduino, wire up the adapter, and this should work. So the first thing we have to worry about is the pinout. Now I haven't mentioned this already, but the Tandy 1000 actually uses an eight pin DIN. Now only four pins in here are gonna be used. And luckily those fall on the pin locations where when you plug in a five pin DIN, it actually meets up and we get the correct signals. We don't end up getting the reset signal, but that's not, doesn't matter. I'm not using that in this source code. So it does work fine as it is with a five pin DIN but you do have to be careful with the alignment because it is possible to turn it one pin too far one direction or the other, and then you're sending signals to the wrong thing. And I advise to be very careful with that. So you either need to buy the correct eight pin DIN connector, or you can use a five pin that are really easy to find, but you just need to make sure that you plug it in correctly. The pin mapping is right here. So I put the IBM or you know the AT connector on one side. So this is the AT five pin and it's one, five, four, and two, and then the Tandy equivalent, this is the connectivity that you need to make between the two. Now, what I like to do to help me when I'm making cables is to draw out both connectors and all the pin numbers on the connectors and then what the signals are and how they connect up together. Now, the colors you see on this piece of paper are from that keyboard extension cord that I cut. Now, using this little piece of wire, I don't need to worry about the colors, but clearly the pin numbers, which are one through five, do matter. And then here are the AT signals, so clock, data, ground on plus five volts, and then the equivalent Tandy ones. 
and this is how it connects up, and the pictures help me do that. You will need to use your mind and do a lot of double checking of your work to ensure that you've run all the cables through correctly. Because if you do reverse, say, the ground and the five volts, you can definitely damage your keyboard and damage this little Arduino board. It is also technically possible you could damage your Tandy 1000 as well if you shorted pins together. So just please be careful on what you're doing with this stuff. Going back to the source code, at the beginning of the code, we are defining what the two PS2 signals are, clock and data, and also the Tandy 1000 clock and data pins. Now these pin numbers are what map up on the Arduino itself. Now it's gonna vary from one Arduino to another, so you do need to look on Google and find out with your Arduino board how the pin numbers here map up to what's in the software. But generally when you see pin two and five and four and three, on this little board here, it has two, three, four, and five, and those are the four pins we're going to be using. Of course, there's also the ground pin, which is labeled as ground, and there's also on this one, a pin labeled VCC, which is five volts. We're gonna be connecting the signal from the computer into the ground and the five volts here, and we're gonna be connecting the connector that goes into the keyboard also to these pins. So basically the computer is gonna power up this little board and it's gonna power up the keyboard as well. I'm not gonna to get too much into the way this code works because it's a little complicated. There's like a state machine to remember the way that the gnome lock and the caps lock is and stuff, but that's what these variables are here. So we're checking the state of the caps lock, the num lock, and also if you're holding the shift key down. And that's specifically because on the 101 keyboard layout, you push shift and the backslash key to get the pipe symbol. And we need to be able to tell that that's what you're intending so that it pushes the correct combination of keys on the Tandy 1000 to give you the pipe symbol because it is not the same as pushing like shift and the seven key, it's a totally different key. And the way both the PS2 and the Tandy work is there most of the keys have a make and a break. So when you push the key, it sends a make code. So for instance, on this keyboard, we're pushing the left arrow. When you push it down, what gets sent is a specific byte that says you're pushing down left arrow. And then what happens when you release it is a different release code is sent, which is the same code, but with an extra bit sent that's telling the controller in the computer that you let go of the key. Most keys on the Tandy work in a very similar fashion to how they do on a 101 keyboard, the make and the break, it's all that same. But there are a couple keys that work differently and caps lock is one of them. So when you first push caps lock, what happens is it sends a make code but it doesn't send a break code until you push it a second time. And it's almost like if the caps lock were a latching key where you push it down and it were holding the key down all the time. And then a release code is sent when you push it again and that kind of unlatches it. So I wrote extra code to take care of that. Everything you see here is special handling like these single keys. And then it gets down to the bottom here and then it uses that translation table up above to just send the usual, these ones here. This is the translation table and it sends the make and break codes as normal. And then we have some more special key handling, and this is for handling like the arrow keys, and the home and the keypad, and the control and alt keys, and then of course the, the end and insert and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the code is just a little hard to read, and it's a little bit messy, and it's really because I didn't quite understand the way PS2 keyboards and the Tandy interacted with each other. And unfortunately, all of the PS2 keyboard libraries that I found seem to be written with the idea that you're gonna be converting a PS2 keyboard into an Arduino sketch. Like you're gonna be using the keyboard to control something on the, on the Arduino directly. So the libraries for the PS2 keyboard automatically are handling like the num lock key and translating the arrow keys on the number pad to you know work as opposed to the eight and the two and the four and the six key. Well, we don't need that with the Tandy. We need to, I need to read the raw scan codes without any kind of translation. And that's why at the top here, I'm using this library, which I found called PS2 key raw. And this, I put the, Git, the GitHub repo for that code, but it doesn't do any of that funky, funky translation. And you have to do it all yourself directly in the code, which is what's going on here with all these special cases. Anyway, down here at the bottom, this function here is where it's actually sending the signal to the Tandy. So it needs to pulse the clock and the data line and these uh, delays here, microsecond delays, are all matching the time delays that are inside of the service manual. This is what I saw, and I did validate that on my oscilloscope, I was seeing exactly the same timing as was in the manual, and luckily, it all works reliably.
Now, if you want to understand more about the way the scan codes work on the Tandy 1000, luckily in the service manual, it has the entire keyboard layout and it shows you what the matching key is. And if you go to the tables that are in here, it shows you the key number, like say key number 33, which is the eight or the tilde, is a 48 for a scan code. This is in hex. And this was all invaluable for me to understand exactly how all the keys on the Tandy keyboard match up to the scan codes that need to be sent. All right, time to program this little Arduino. So what you need to do, because this has no USB port, is you need to connect a USB to serial UART, which is what this little board is right here. Now I keep these cables on here, and you notice on here are some pins on the end, right? And that's because I can take these and just stick them right into here, like so, and just with the friction of pushing down on here, with the pins sticking through there, it means that I can program this without needing to actually solder pins onto there. I forgot to mention on my small Arduino boards, I actually run OptiBoot, which is a different bootloader that is much faster. Like it doesn't have that delay when you first power it on. It's good for things you need to start running immediately. Anyways, it uses a different bootloader and you have some different options in here. So if you're interested in that, you need to go look up OptiBoot, but I'm not gonna get into how that works here. But programming, it's basically the same. So we'll hit program, we'll make this bigger so we can see what's happening. And there it goes, it's starting to program now. We have the blinky blinky on the little board and there we go, it's programmed. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this cable long and short. So this one here, I know I could be using a round cable. This is the end, I, I'm gonna take the part that goes in the computer and make this long so I can kind of have this tucked around the edge of the computer. And then there'll be the Arduino board and then there'll have be another short cable with the uh, female connector for the keyboard to plug into. I only need four wires, so I'm just going to peel off the extras. And we just take these apart. You do that by using a little screwdriver. Got these from AliExpress. Just look on there for DIN, five pin. There's, there's so many available. I mean, there's no point putting a, a link because they'll constantly be changing. Well, we just take these apart. We just need to get a little center pin part out. Whoa. So the way I drew my diagrams, I have them from this way. So looking at the, the, the face on into the pin, which is not super helpful because to be honest, when you solder, you have to reverse this. So pin one on the female connector, which I'm holding in my hand here, pin one on the right is this one on the left. Now this one happens to have labeling. Pin one is right there, pin three is labeled, so it's opposite. And the same goes for the male connector, which is this one here. So pin one I have written on the left, well, it's actually this pin over on the right. So probably when I drew this, I should have reversed that, but I think I drew this thinking about the face on. So just keep that in mind. You gotta pay attention with these are, and if you're not sure, do some Googling. You will find all the information you need on the internet. So first I'm just going to strip these wires, prepare them, and also tin them. Okay, and then I recommend you tin the pins on the two connectors. So this is the female connector, which is the AT one here. So I'm gonna tin one, two, four, and five. And this is the male connector. I switched to a different helping hands. That, that one I had, I threw away, it was a piece of junk. This is a good one that was sent in for a mail call. So on the male connector, this is the Tandy side. We have pins one, three, four, and five. Okay, so I have the wires on here. Now, before I solder these wires onto this uh, Arduino, you have to slide these uh, hoods over. So don't forget to do that. So for these particular connectors, these two plastic things are different. So you make sure you put the right one on the, the right connector. So the male one is the one right here, and this is the female one. Now I cut this length really short. So when this is on here, uh, you know, actually it, it'll, it'll look like that. So there'll, there'll be enough of this. But just in case, I think I'm gonna cut some of this strain relief off here. You can of course decide to do your connector any way you like, right? Uh, this, is, this is just the way I'm doing it. Now, if you wanna save yourself all this fiddly work uh, with this, these connectors, all you need to do is buy pre-made cable, like an extension cable like I used, a DIN 5 extension cable, cut it in the middle, and you put the Arduino in the middle of that. That is a lot easier, but potentially more expensive than dealing with soldering all these fiddly wires. This small length of wire I had didn't have the stripe on it anymore, so I did mark with black uh, marker where pin one is. 
and then I have put them onto the connectors in order. So it's one and whatever the following pins are on the respective cable, but I always know that it's in order starting from the black cable. Okay, I made a little table to help me solder onto the Arduino. So Tandy, clock, data, and five volts. On the wire that's running from the connector, it's pins one, four, and five, but the data and clock signals go onto the Arduino on pins five and two. Now I'm translating this from the source code in there, the pin assignments. And then for the AT data clock and five volts, it's the same thing. It's four and three for the Arduino pins and that's from the wires two and one that goes to the connector. And then the ground pins are right there. The uh, five volt pins, which is pin five on both cables. And then the ground pins, which are three and four respectively, they would just go onto the VCC pins on this little uh, Deke robot board. I, I did switch this out, by the way, only because um, I forgot about the OptiBoot and I had trouble programming the first board, so I switched to this one, but it would be the same on either one. There are multiple ground pins you can solder to, so there's one there, there's one there, so you can use either one of those. Although on this particular board, there is only one VCC pin, so both um, this Tandy pin five here and the AT pin five, same pin, same two wires. I'll have to tie those together and solder them into that one hole. So I have some really large heat shrink tubing that is big enough to fit over this entire microcontroller board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this over the cord so when I finish soldering, I can slide it back over and shrink that over here and then jam some hot glue on the ends and that'll sort of give a little strain relief to these wires. Okay, so I finished soldering up the wires. I'm gonna check it with the multimeter now. Okay, I found one mistake. The Tandy ground pin I soldered onto the RXD pin on the Arduino instead of the ground pin, which is uh, just over a couple. Actually, before I assemble this any further, I'm just gonna plug the keyboard into this DIN connector here and just make sure this all works before I uh, put the rest of the connector together. So let's power this on with the keyboard connected. Okay, the red light is on. Okay, oh, and it's not working. Let me unplug this from the computer. Plug it back in. Make sure the keyboard lights flash. The lights flashed on the keyboard. So I know that it's getting powered up correctly, but obviously uh, there's a problem with the signaling. Let me investigate. Okay, I think it was a simple problem. Inside the connector that goes into the Tandy, one of the wires had come off. I had a cold solder joint there and it was actually the pin one which is the clock signal. No, sorry, data signal for the Tandy. So yeah, without the data signal, you're not getting anything. So I'm gonna plug this in again and try this out for a second time and keep my fingers crossed that this will work. So I'm gonna hold this all together. Now that I think about it, I probably should have made the LED on here, which I think is uh, what, data line 13, blink when it was actually sending characters to the machine. but. I didn't end up doing that and I don't know why. Here we go, is it gonna work? Oh no, it's still not working. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Okay, hold on, I didn't have the power light on so I think I didn't have this pushed in all the way. There we go. Okay, oh, there we go. Now it works. <laughs> Boy, comedy of errors. But yeah, right now um, I don't blink the LED on here. All you get is the power LED, but look at that. It's working, excellent. Okay, now I know this is working. I'm gonna finish putting this together and make it look all pretty. Okay, here's the Tandy 1000. It's set up on the desk as if I were going to use it. I have a Commodore monitor. Sorry, it's not a Tandy monitor. This does support TTL uh, RGB, CGA style graphics, which means it works perfectly with this computer. So it's what I had handy. So I'm gonna be using it, but I have the regular PS2 keyboard and how do I use it on this thing? And here we go, here is the adapter all completed. Sure enough, the Arduino board is inside the heat shrink tubing. I also used hot glue on both ends just to secure the wire. So even if you tug on it, nothing happens. In fact, I put hot glue into the strain relief areas of these connectors, which means this entire thing is relatively tug proof. It's not gonna be affected by pulling because of all the hot glue. Plus hopefully that focuses. I made a P-Touch label just to remind me that this is an AT to Tandy 1000 adapter for future knowledge when I find this thing lying around in the lab. So I'll take this and I'll plug it into the Tandy. Now remember, you have to have the notch up because I didn't use the right eight pin DIN, I just used a five pin one. 
And then this end though is trivial. You just plug this in like so. I'm just gonna put the cable off to the side. We'll turn on the monitor and turn on the computer. Just so you can see the monitor properly, I'll be turning off the studio lights. And there we go, the computer is booted and look, the keyboard is working. Let's do a little typing, echo. Hello, this is a keyboard. Oops, okay, it works quite well. It's really hard to type off, to, off at an angle like this. The keyboard is fully working and quite responsive to touch and doesn't lose, oh, echo doesn't lose key presses. There's probably a little bit of delay from all that Arduino cord, which is pretty inefficient on my part, but you really can't tell. Hooked up to the CRT here, feels like it's pretty much instantaneous. If I type really quickly, it seems to be able to handle it without problem. This computer has no compact flash card or hard drive installed. It's just dual floppy drives as it was from the factory. It does have 640K. And in the B drive, I have a copy of David Murray's, the 8-bit guys, Planet X3. So let's just give this a test. Of course, we have Tandy graphics, we have Tandy sound. There we go, start game. Sweet, it's working. I'll build a wall. So I figured people would ask, so I might as well try it. This is an old AT style keyboard. It has a five pin DIN, not PS2. Will this particular keyboard work on this adapter? Because so far I've only been showing this PS2 keyboard, even though I'm using an adapter, it's still PS2. Let's give it a try. Out with the HP PS2 keyboard. And let's try this rather heavy, very chunky corded AT co keyboard here. Now this should absolutely work, although I haven't tried it myself. I can't really get the connector in. It did flash the lights on there, so I assume it's sort of half in, it's gonna work. And there it is, it's working. Let's exit out of the game. And back in DOS here, let's see. I think it should be working fine. Yeah, of course it is. As far as I'm aware, the PS2 keyboards and the AT keyboards use exactly the same protocol. So everything should be working. Backslash, pipe key, yep, everything works. Caps lock is working. Numlock, numlock is working fine as well. Yeah, everything seems fine. The fact that this didn't really go in there properly, it's probably something to do with the very cheap Chinese connector. I mean, push it in like that, it does light up. The keyboard is working. It's weird, I don't really see the reason for that. I wanted to focus on this newer keyboard because I just wanted to show that you don't need an old expensive AT keyboard to use this adapter. You can use something extremely cheap like this, which you can find for just like $5 in a lot of thrift stores. So that's gonna be it for my Tandy video on my Tandy 1000 PS2 slash AT to Tandy 1000 keyboard adapter, which you can build yourself for just a few dollars. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, but if you didn't, you know what to do, you can hit that thumbs down button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Of course, that bell icon, hit that. If you wanna maybe be notified when I upload videos, it's super random if you're gonna get one. I, you'll probably never see one, but you know, just for fun, hit it anyways. And then of course, put your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Don't forget to check the description for links to the GitHub repository where I'll have the Arduino code so you can build your own. And that's gonna be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.